Hi everyone and welcome to the Private Practice with Soul podcast. This is the first podcast for counsellors that just don't align with the traditional approaches to business and that want to use their spiritual gifts, talents and interests to create, you guessed it, a private practice with soul. So look, leave it to me to provide you with everything you need, including strategies that you can use to increase your income, reduce your workload and of course increase inquiries and referrals to your beautiful soul-led private practice. I love it so much. If you haven't done it already, grab your journal, grab your pen and let's begin. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I hope that you're having a really, really productive, um, I want to say, profitable uh, week where you're working in flow with your higher purpose and all good things are happening for you. (laughs) Um, I'm so excited to bring you this episode of the Private Practice with Soul podcast because I'm going to share with you um, the journey for me um, in private practice for making my first six figures without Medicare. And the reason that I want to um, share this with you is because I realize I've never told you how I did it and it might be helpful for you to have a real life case study to go by. And I'm not saying this is how you should do it. I'm just going to share with you what it was like for me. Um leaving Medicare behind and essentially starting a private practice from scratch. (laughs) Um, So the background was, as many of you know, I had been a um, psychologist working in the Medicare system for about 20 years, um, maybe a little bit longer. And anyway, uh, I decided to leave because um, the more I became connected with who I am and the more aware I became of my values, um, the greater the gap became between um, it aligning with me to work within a, a Medicare model. And for me, look, psychologists, they work under many different models and not all of them work under Medicare. Um, th- there's also work cover and there's insurance and there's you know forensic and all of that sort of stuff. I'm just talking about my experience. My experience was like nearly 100% Medicare. Um, And as soon as I had that kind of dark night of the soul and that prompted me to reconnect with my my soul and what was right for me and my path, that was when everything began to change. And I knew that I couldn't keep showing up in the in a way that required me to compromise my values. It just got harder and harder and harder. And to be entirely open with you, I was, you know what, scared of dropping my title, releasing the the title of psychologist. I was, my ego was really worried about that. What if no one respects me anymore because I don't have that title? I was scared, you know, out of my head because I was thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I've, my whole working career has been based on government rebates um, and, and now I'm not going to have those or I won't have those. Um, what am I going to do? How am I going to support myself? And I was I, I was used to working with people that couldn't afford services. So that had been my whole story. My whole story was people can't afford it. People don't want to pay for it. So I knew I had a huge hurdle internally, like cognitively, intellectually to overcome um, because I knew there was no way I was going to be able to create a business if I didn't believe people could afford it and would invest in it and all of those sorts of things. And anyway, so I, I kind of made the decision. And the reason I want to share this podcast with you today is because I was talking to mum last night and we both realized that I um, retired as a psychologist two years ago. It was the 1st of September, 2020. Um, and as I'm recording this, it's the 13th of September. So it's you know um, two years and a week. So I thought it might be a good idea to just, um, yeah, I, I realized I just never had shared the journey about how you make six figures in your first year as a counsellor without Medicare. So I wanted to give you that because I want to show you what's possible. Um, and I I want you to be able to take what sounds okay and what resonates with you and just kind of leave the rest. Um, and as I said, this is just my journey. You don't have to follow it. Um, you will have your own journey, but I just want to show you what's possible. So here's what I did. 
I made the decision to retire from psychology probably about six months before I actually did it. Um, And the reason for that, so it was early in the year, it would have been about March. um, Things were getting pretty bad for me because I was just finding it harder and harder and harder to have to accept to be told what to do, to be told how to do it, to be told, you know, this this is the way that, that psychology is going to work and everything. When I'm all about you walk your own path um, and, and you find you're empowering others to find their own solutions to things um, and, and a whole lot of other stuff. But anyway, so that awareness, it was around March, it just got to tipping point or breaking point or whatever you want to call it, where I just thought, I cannot continue to show up like this anymore. Um, and then that's when the actual, you know, it became a reality for me. And as soon as it became real that, okay, you can't keep showing up like this, you're going to have to do something about it. That's when all of the thinking started about the how. How was I going to make this happen? What was it going to look like? And to be honest with you, I I was scared, as I said a little while ago, um, because my whole experience had been the opposite to what I was trying to, to create or what I wanted to do. So what I did was I started um, speaking with other counsellors and I started showing up in those communities even more than I had been because I wanted to get a handle on what it was going to be like as a counsellor and what it was going to be like stepping more into counselling, stepping more into coaching and things like that. Um, That was the first thing. It was really around um, myself leaning into the career that I really wanted to move into, the space that I really wanted to move into and having some exposure to that, building out a peer network. um, That was really important. In terms of a business plan, um, I didn't really have, like I didn't write down on in my remarkable or, you know, on paper or in an Excel spreadsheet, what a business plan was, but I had it in my head that what I needed to do was market. I knew that much. And so I didn't know what my marketing was going to look like at the time, but what I started to do was let people know that I was moving out of psychology. So I just started um, mentioning that. um, And then I started mentioning it more and more and more, the closer it got to September. Um, and then what I started to do as well was I started to think about, um, what I wanted the practice to look like. And I got, I got really excited by this because all of a sudden I knew I had the freedom to practice in a way that psychology hadn't let psychologists practice and, and didn't provide for psychologists. So I got really excited about that. I got really excited about um, the types of therapeutic modalities I was going to be able to use, how I was going to be able to show up, how I was going to get to deliver my services differently. I was just so excited about it. And I think that excitement put me in a state of flow. And from there, the marketing for me, um, it wasn't actually uh, strategic in that I didn't sit down and think, oh, what should my marketing be and what should I say each day of the week? For me, my marketing um, was all about me just being honest and true and sharing my journey. And so I started to tell people how excited I was to uh, leave psychology and I started to tell people how excited I was to move into this new space. And that was really all that I was sharing um, just because I was so excited about it. Um, And you can still go back uh, on my Facebook pages and stuff like that and you can see all the posts. Like there was no hard marketing or anything like that. It was just me um, letting everyone know, I guess, be part of the journey. This is what's happening. And um, anyway, from that, what ended up happening was people were really curious about um, why I wanted to leave psychology. Um, Was I nervous about my money? Um, Was I nervous about the turnover for the practice? Was I nervous about where I was going to get referrals? Um, Some people couldn't understand, you know, why a psychologist would retire in order to work in counselling. So there was lots of discussion that ended up happening around the move. 
And then um, the day started to get closer and closer. It was really looming up to the 1st of September. And I I had to do things like stop accepting Medicare referrals. I had to let my referrers know I was no longer doing that. Um, and I had to start thinking about where I was going to get my clients from. Um, and so it was really honest to goodness, hand on heart. I did the work that I, you know, talk with you about. I went within. I tapped into inner guidance to soul wisdom and I knew who I really wanted to work with and I trusted that by setting an intention um, to call in those dream clients that that was what was going to happen and I was really 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 lucky because that's exactly what ended up happening and the other thing that I did that helped me transition into counseling was um, I started a group for counselors and um, it's still going today. It gets probably about between 20 and 30 members a week join, um, which is great. It's at about 17 or 1800 members now. Um, So I wanted a networking group and that was the idea of it. I wanted to build peer relations. And I saw that in the counseling community, there wasn't really much happening in terms of private practice. And I knew that that was something I could definitely help counselors with because I'd been on the other side of the fence. So I wanted to support the counseling community and be more a part of it. And so that's why I started that group. And I never thought that it would grow as big as it has. And I'm so thankful that it has. Um, And then from there, the other thing that I did was I just got all in with the soul stuff. And I went and um, got branding that aligned with the direction I was taking the business. And so my logo back then, as you know, was a crescent moon. I got soft colors um, for my color palette. I made a beautiful website full of spirituality and stuff like that. And then it was just um, a matter of, I guess, actually doing it. So on the 1st of September, I contacted APRA and I let them know that I wanted to be removed from the um, Board of Supervisors. Um, so I was one, not board of supervisors, I was one of the board approved supervisors for the master's students um, in psychology. So I asked them, you know, please remove me from, from that, from the supervisor register and please remove me from, um, you know, the register of psychologists. Now, APRA were, um, you know, they were like, why do you want to leave? <laughs> and um, they really wanted to, they were so curious. And uh, to be honest with you, it took me about three months to to get my name off the registers um, and it was so hard. They, they were like, no, we need psychologists, blah, blah, blah. And it was really difficult. Um, I had to fill in all of these forms to deregister and it was just, but do you know what? Every time they made it difficult for me to deregister, that served as reinforcement for me that I was going in the right direction with not being a psychologist. So then what happened was it all got, um, or all those details got removed and I retired and it was all wonderful. And then it was just a very natural transition into counseling. Um, for probably three months um, before the 1st of September, I completely changed my website. Um, I don't have a website now, but I did then. And I completely changed my website, um, just totally revamped it. I said, hey, do you know what? don't do Medicare anymore, not a psychologist anymore. This is how much it's going to cost to have a session with me. These are the services that I offer, et cetera, et cetera. And from the 1st of September, there was just like, it was like nothing really changed. Um, I opened my diary and I made a decision that I didn't want to see the volume of clients I'd been seeing. So that was the first adjustment, like seeing less appointments being available in the diary. Um, It was kind of scary because in the past, like, you know, a few, few appointments meant little income. So that was a real hurdle, um, I guess, energetically and psychologically, I needed to overcome because I had beliefs around, you know, what it meant to have so many appointments in the diary. But I knew I didn't want to be working as much either. So I reduced the number of appointments that were available. I started receiving inquiries from Psychology Today from uh, counselling clients 
brand new counselling clients, when I told them um, that I didn't do mental health care plans anymore and I wasn't doing Medicare anymore, they didn't mind. They still booked in. Um, But then there's a way that I do my inquiry calls. But anyway, that's a whole other podcast. Um, They still booked in. Um, The other thing that um, really developed in my business was I started to get more and more uh, requests for supervision, mentoring and coaching. So in terms of the um, model that I had for my business in the first year of um, private practice without rebates, and by the way, I, I'm not in ACA or PAC for some of my clients, you know, for the most part, don't even get health fund rebates. Um, so that's the position that I was in. I'm just being totally transparent because I want you to see what's possible for you too. And you may take a very different path. But anyway, so my business model looked like counselling. Um, for clients and then it had like professional services which was um, the supervision mentoring and coaching so my counseling was 100% private apart from I had um, a handful of NDS clients at the time Um, and aside from the professional services and the counseling the other thing that I had was um, EAP retainer so I got my very first EAP retainer that gave me 15 or 1600 dollars a month for 12 months um, coming into the business which really did help sustain me um, during those quieter times the other The other thing that um, I learned very quickly on in um, a practice without Medicare was when working with professionals, I put packages together because I learned the value of reliable recurring income um, and I wanted to make my services accessible for them and provide me with recurring income because I knew I needed that predictability of turnover and I knew I needed the stability. I was very aware that I needed to not only have an income to pay myself, but I also needed to put money aside for income tax, you know, personal income tax, plus GST, plus um, business tax, um, plus work cover, plus superannuation. Um, And I didn't want to do what I had heard so many other counsellors do, which was have these, you know, periods of like it was um, really profitable in some months and then other months they were living off their savings. I wanted to set my practice up from the beginning to um, minimise any drama financially. And so for me, with um, my services for professional services, um, everything became a program. So it's either a 12-month package or a 12-month program um, and people will be able to book in for their mentoring or their supervision. Um, With my coaching, um, that was all packages and programs as well. And the financial breakdown was pretty much even between the professional services and the counselling. It was probably a 50-50 split um, in the first 12 months. And it was um, a six-figure year, that very first year um, out of Medicare. So building a private practice, you know, whole new branding, whole new name, whole new philosophy, whole new client base. Um and yeah, a whole new set of services. So that was how I did it. So it wasn't entirely counseling um, that got me to six figures. It was having uh, counseling plus having other services like programs and, and groups and stuff. Um, in the second year, things started to become more refined. So um, I still retained uh, counseling. And I still retained, um, but with the counselling, I was no longer doing um, NDIS. And I think I just had one EAP left that I was finishing up with. Um, But what that gave way for was um, creating more programs. So last year was a really big year of programs um, and they were all around marketing for therapists. I wanted to teach counsellors how to market their practice and get referrals because I saw so many of them were struggling with that. Um, 
One of the join up questions I have for all of my groups and memberships is, you know, what are you struggling with? And every single day, nine out of 10 new members will say finding referrals. So I knew I had to be able to support all my members and and community by teaching them what I had learned about um, getting referrals and marketing and things like that. Um, So the the other thing that I can share with you is before I made the transition, um, to retire from psychology and Medicare into private practice, I did go and get more qualifications in coaching because I wanted to make sure, um, just for my own peace of mind, coaching's like counseling. It's a self-regulated industry. Um, But I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was doing, that I was going to be an effective coach, that I could support my clients. Plus, I wanted to be able to coach in a way that excited me and lit me up. So for me, that included qualifications in business coaching, energy coaching, life coaching and spiritual coaching. Um, I then went and completed training in um, shamanistic healing and shamanism and I love that <laughs> um, and it, and I got a coach, you know, I got my own coach um, because I was all about energy and I was all about masculine and the feminine and so I wanted to work with someone that could help me unpack all of that and apply it to private practice. And so before I started the private practice, I got coaching, I got more qualifications. Um, And then that coaching was so helpful because it gave me a space where I could speak freely and get support. Um, Whereas sometimes when you're, uh, you know, you're running a group, for example, you feel, well, I don't know about you, but sometimes I can feel like, "Mm, is it all right for me to actually ask for guidance given it's my group, you know, and and stuff like that. So I was going through a little bit of that, you know, imposter syndrome. Um, And so it was really just so helpful for me to be able to have a a safe space and that sounding board. Um, The other thing that I did was um, I, I switched supervisors and um, I had a supervisor that I could talk to that understood, um, well, he didn't really understand why I wanted to quit psychology, (laughs) Um, but he could understand that I was on a journey of change. And um, I worked with him for about 18 months. And so that was really helpful. So getting supports in place. Um, And then in that second year, yeah, it was really around... I found myself creating programs. So I created um, the Private Practice with Soul class of 2021. It was like this 12-month program and it helped everybody who was um, a a student in that learn about marketing from soul, about authenticity, about integrity and using their soul values to, you know, infuse them into their private practice and in doing so attract clients to them through their feminine radiance and things like that and it was so much fun and I had a few other programs as well I introduced clients on demand last year um, and that was such a beautiful program as well and then um, I ended up um, after I'd run all these programs, I knew that I wanted to do more of the group stuff. So then I went and did um, extra PD around group coaching, group training, all of that, um, because I was refining, you see. Um, and then my practice last year was the income was probably down to about a, a third of my income was coming from private counselling. And probably two thirds was coming from um, professional services. So that just means providing supervision uh, programs, mentoring programs, um, the the group courses, um, you know, like the private practice with Soul Class of 2021, clients on demand, things like that. So, and I had started to introduce um, selling little things that were like one off, like a little. I noticed that a lot of counsellors were often asking for forms and I had forms. So I simply took what I had already and I bundled it together and I um, sold it as a product um, on my website. So I've still got that website. I just don't have my own website anymore. But my my that's a um, it's with Member Vault. So it's not technically my website. It's with Member Vault. And you can go in there and you can um, book into the professional services or you can buy products. And 
that bundle of essential forms for private practice became a product and it's sold over a thousand bundles now um, and it's just been so popular and probably about I don't know, I, I sell maybe five or six of those a week and they're $47. And so, but it's now turned into fairly predictable income. Like I know I'm going to get X amount of money per month just from having that one bundle up there that I put up there two years ago. And I constantly go in and update it, you know. So that was how I started building out the money and the revenue for the private practice. Um, and then this year, um, it's been probably still about a third of the income coming in from counselling, although I see a lot less counselling clients than I was before. And my fee is a lot higher for counselling than it was before. And the reasons behind that, and we can talk about that in another episode. Um, But the focus for me now has been on how can I improve clients on demand? So I ran that again this year. So that's in its second or third round now um, and refining some of the other group programs. So refining and improving the supervision um, program, refining and improving coaching, refining and improving uh, the mentoring. So everything's kind of been in this process of not recreating things and not creating new things. Um, These past 12 months have been about how do I refine what I've already got and make my life easier so I'm not constantly producing new stuff. Um, And the other thing that I can share with you is the direction that my business is going in now is that I will still keep counselling and it's still my intention to have a third of my practice income from the counselling. Um, I still want to have a third of my income from um, the professional services and then a third from group programs. But my my overall intention is to reduce a lot of the one-to-one work and to start um, doing more of the one-to-many. And the reason that I want to do that is because I have to be mindful of my own energy, you know. Um, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. I'm 48. <laughs> um, I've got big caring responsibilities for my mum and I'm looking after Gabe. You know, I went to the vet with him two weeks ago and the vet's like, you know, you, you've probably got a, a couple of months with him. Um, so enjoy it, you know, um, stuff like that. So I, my energy isn't, I don't have the, the headspace to sit down and give a hundred percent in as many one-to-one sessions as I was before. Um, and so I'm not going to offer as many as I was before. I'm aware of how I can show up and I want to, um, show up in a way that is nourishing for me and fills my cup as well as and energizes me as well as has that same effect for the the people that I work with one-on-one. The other thing that I am doing, I know I've just said I'm not introducing new services, but in terms of um, expanding out the business to be less of the one-on-one is I'm introducing, I know I just said I wasn't, but I am, um, it's kind of like, well, it's always been there in the background, but and I have made money from it, but it's always just kind of been sporadic. Sporadically, people would book in, but I want to make it more consistent. Um, and that's doing readings for um, people who are thinking about private practice or people who are in private practice. My readings include things for like I have readings to support Um, people who are experiencing things like imposter syndrome. I have readings that will help people with their messaging for private practice. I have readings for what people can do or stop doing to help call in more of their soul aligned clients for private practice. I have readings that will help people understand, um, you know, what might be beneath the surface in terms of why they're not seeing the results that they want financially or in terms of their visibility or in terms of calling in the right clients for them. I have readings galore and I am loving doing them. As you know, I've been speaking about it a bit on the on the last few podcasts. Um, and so this is an area that I am just feeling very energized by at the moment. And so I'm wanting to do more of that. Um, and so that you will see that being built out. So my model of business in year two, and I'm still on track for six figures, um, is 
less about I'm reducing the one to one in the counseling space and it's more about programs um, and it's more about uh, memberships yeah that was the other thing memberships and I love memberships because um, again it's recurring um, revenue for my business I I get to create content I get to be part of a growing community and I get to receive recurring revenue. So one of the um, memberships that I have is just $7. And I know that that's really, 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 really low. And I'm always saying to people, don't undercharge. Um, but the reason that that is $7 is because it's for people who are brand new to private practice and don't know what they're doing. They don't have all of the systems in place yet. Um or it's for people who are students and they're not yet at private practice, but they're um, doing the pre-work. So they're kind of getting everything together. Um, so I wanted to make it affordable for them because they're not generating income from counselling yet. Um, and it's for people who are in private practice, but not yet getting enough clients to be able to afford some of my other services like mentoring or supervision. Um, so I still wanted to be able to help them. Um but in a way that um, served me and my business, but made it affordable for them with theirs. So that's why that one's $7. Um, And then there's another one for people who are in private practice, who are seeing clients um, and who want to take things deeper and they love all the spiritual stuff because I want to do what I love doing, right? And for me, that's having conversations with practice owners about how you can integrate your spiritual beliefs, your tools, your frameworks into creating your private practice, expanding your private practice, um, working through your, your limitations your blocks, um, learning how to receive more while you're doing less, all of that sort of stuff. So that one is only $49 a month. And the reason that that's so low is because, again, I just wanted to give people who weren't yet sure about working with me one-to-one and who weren't yet sure about um, what I was like and what it could be like and what the standard of my work was like, I wanted to give those people um, an opportunity to experience what it could be like to work with me um, without it being too risky financially. So that one's there at $49. And um, I love membership so much because of the community. And the other thing too is that apart from community and recurring revenue, one of the things that I learned with memberships is I have a portal and for each of my members, my memberships, and I put lots of content um, that people can just go and they can, um, what do you call it? They can just, I was going to say nitpick, but that's not the right word. I, I hope nobody nitpicks. They could just sort of um, take and, and pick, pick and choose. Yeah, pick and choose what they want. They don't have to like, they can binge on it if they want. Some people have. Other people just go in and take what they need. Um, other people download everything and save it for later. So, um, but it's all there. And what I've learned is that some people just want the portal. Other people will never touch the portal. They're there for the community. They're there for, um, so there's group coaching in um, that membership and there, there's a Q&A call coaching in the $7 membership. But they're there because they want, to be less isolated they don't want to feel alone so they're not as interested in all the templates and the resources that I've got for them they are there because they want to be around others they want to be sharing their stories with others they want to have that connection with others they want that group coaching all of that sort of stuff so memberships has been really interesting um, and I'm definitely keeping them and they're just going to keep growing and growing so my focus moving forward is a few things. It's the memberships, getting them going. Um, There's a new group coaching program coming out under my professional services banner, um, and that's going to be 997, and that will be for five people. But I'll have two groups. One availability will be in the morning and one will be in the afternoon, just because of time differences. Um, So there'll be opportunities for up to 10 people to join that. Um, And I'll be sharing information about that sort of down the track. I'm working on it at the moment behind the scenes. So it's memberships for me um, and programs, um, programs for professional services. And then the other thing is still keeping going with the counselling, still keeping the counselling at bringing in about 33 to 35% of the annual income for the business, 
but seeing less clients than I was last year. So that's how I did it. Oh, and I'm not doing EAP like the last 12 months, not doing EAP, um, let go of the retainer, gave that to another counselor in one of my groups. Um, so there's, there's none of that anymore. And all the clients that I see for counseling, um, I speak to them in terms of depth psychology, soul psychology, transpersonal psychology, um, all of that sort of good stuff. We get to talk about um, archetypes. We get to talk about the collective unconscious. We get to talk about um, soul work. We get to talk about inner guidance. And it does not feel like work. Even doing tarot readings um, and oracle readings for private practice owners does not feel like work. And it is like I love getting up in the morning because I get to do this. So the reason I wanted to share this with you was because um, I wanted to show you that you can create six figures in your private practice without being a psychologist and without Medicare rebates. I've done it. Um, I've done it two years in a row now. Um, and my income just keeps building on the year before. So you can absolutely do it too. And you can do it in your first year. I know we don't really talk about money in Australia and it's like not a cool thing to do, but I feel like someone's got to have these conversations um, with us because otherwise we're all just going to be exhausting ourselves, burning out, undercharging, over-delivering. And yeah, I want you to see what it, what it looks like. And the other thing too is I just want to give you every reassurance that there was nothing from my past psychology life that spilled over into this new business. So there were no rebates when I um, retired from psychology and became a counsellor. So I couldn't see those clients. I didn't get referrals from doctors. I didn't want referrals from doctors. I wasn't going and having meetings and, and you know, meet and greets with doctors. Um, so I let go of all of my referral streams. I had to find totally new ones. Initially, um, the bulk of my referrals came from my Psychology Today profile, which I've since released as well. I don't have that anymore. I just don't need it. It's a fantastic source of um, clients. And that's why I wrote a Psychology uh, Today profile booster pack because my profile was so successful at getting me the right clients. And I saw other counselors struggle with that. So I just put my process together and I shared it and I shared it free. Um, it, it's I think it's going to be up in my Etsy store store to buy but if you want the free copy you can get it in um, either Counselors Connect or um, Counselors Connect Australia or in ACPPO or you could just message me because I don't do email um, anymore I that's another thing I've let go of email so um, if people because all of my work's online. Um, my community's online. So everyone gets in touch with me now on Messenger on Facebook or um, on direct message on Instagram. So please don't email me because it's not going to get answered. I don't do it. Um, the only reason I've got my email there really is for other things. It's like for my accountant, it's for the ATO, it's for, for that kind of stuff. It's not for not for us um, and it's not for, for clients. Like there's no email for that. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you need me, just get in touch with me in, through social media. They're the easiest ways. Um, but yeah, so you can absolutely create a... Um, six-figure private practice, if that's what you really want to do or if that's what you're questioning or if that's what you're wondering about, you can, but you need to think ahead. So even if you're a student and it's your intention in January or February to open your practice, start thinking around, you know, the next month or so of um, what you want that practice to look like, how you want it to feel Start thinking about your messaging, your niching, your branding. Start thinking about all of that now. And, you know, October, November, December, start marketing your practice so that when you do come to open the doors, um, you will have clients there ready to go. Um, that's what I did. And honestly, like I took a week off in between retiring from psychology and officially starting the private practice because I just needed a week. Um, it was a big thing to release and let go of and I had to process all of that. Um, so take a week or two off if you need to and then you'll start to a business that's ready to go, that's going to be profitable from day one. Um, that was what I did. It worked for me. 
do get help. You, please don't wing it. Um, winging it is going to cost you a lot of time and money, but it will also mess with you in terms of your confidence and it, it can lead to imposter syndrome because you'll be wondering why everyone else is successful and you're not. It's probably because they did go and get help and they're not going to share with you information that they've paid for. Remember that. Um a lot of people get very protective over information and sharing information that they personally have paid to receive. So I know, for example, um, uh, people that I've coached, they've paid thousands of dollars to work with me as their coach. They're not going to then go away and tell everybody everything that we've discussed because um, they paid for it. So it's it's important to them that they keep it to themselves. Um, so that's why when you look around and you're trying to get advice, um, you have to always find someone that can support you and help you that you can trust <laughs> because a lot of the time people will hold back information that they themselves paid money to get. Not everyone, but a lot of them. You know, think about yourself. Are you are you really going to go and share information that you paid thousands of dollars to get? Probably not. <laughs> um, or if you did, you might share a little bit, but you're not going to share all of it. So anyway, you can create a six-figure practice. You can work less hours doing it. You can create a model of practice that works for you. Um, is it possible to make six figures um, solely doing counselling? Absolutely it is. Um, how would you do that? Well, it's going to be a combination of the masculine and the feminine. Yep, you're going to need um, a few different referral streams. Number one, you're going to need a really clear marketing message so people know why they're booking in with you. Number two, um, you're going to need to be visible so people can actually find you. Um, charge the right fee if I didn't say that already um, and look at different funding streams that you can work with within the counselling division of your private practice. So that might be EAP, NDIS, work, work safe for um, counsellors in states where you're able to provide work safe, could be victims of crime if I didn't say that, <laughs> um, all, all different things. It could be training um, as part of your counselling I don't know, it could be having packages together as part of your counselling or doing counselling programs um, for clients. So yes, you can absolutely do it, um, but you just need to sit down with somebody and figure out your model, figure out the hours that you're going to spend on it because let's remember, um, it's not that you work 20 hours a week. You might be seeing 20 clients a week, but you're probably still working 40. <laughs> So you, you have to reevaluate your hours, um, align that with the money, align that with your intention. And that's how you're going to create a solid private practice that allows you to feel energized, lit up, excited by your work and still pay off a mortgage or two. OK, so you can do it. Um, as I said, if you need help with any of it, reach out, ask each other in the groups. How did you how did you do it? Um, ask me. I'm happy to, to share with you the journey. But you can build a private practice without Medicare, without health fund rebates. Um, yeah, I'm proof. And I want to help you with that, too. If you want help, let me know. Otherwise, um, yeah, just have an amazing rest of the week. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the podcast. I appreciate you so, 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 so much. And yeah, I'll talk to you later. Bye. I hope that you loved this episode as much as I loved putting it together for you. To get more resources to help you in your private practice, head over to Instagram. My handle is at the private practice coach. And also, if you want more inquiries and referrals for your business, let me know. I have a program called Clients on Demand that opens every quarter, and I can absolutely get you some information for that as well. You are doing an amazing job. Thank you for sharing your gifts with the world. Bye.